Tony Atlas, how many of you know Tony Atlas? This will help to illustrate a lot of what I'm trying to teach you. How many of you know what Tony Atlas, how he's built, how he used to be built? How many of you know how strong Tony Atlas is? Like there's strong, then there's like retard strong, then there's like chimpanzee strong, and there's like retard chimpanzee strong. He's like there. Tony Atlas went down to Georgia, and this was when Georgia, they would run the towns on a weekly basis. Doesn't matter if you run them on a weekly basis, you run them on a monthly basis, it's all still the same psychology. So, <laughs> Ole goes, as he's the booker, goes, we're going to take you around the horn, we, you know, around the loop, and we want you to just at intermission go out without your shirt on and cut a quick promo. Nothing more, nothing less. Why would Ole want him to do that? Because just his appearance alone is his gimmick. gimmick. And if he cuts a nice humble promo, how many people in the audience now want to be him, which means he gets over doing what? Selling. Nothing more than selling his gimmick. Okay? The following week, I want you to go out, I want you to cut a promo. Ole knows how strong he is, he says, I want you to tell everybody, if you come out, I need everybody to come out next week. Make sure you show up. Support me. I'm going to be right here in this middle of this ring. I'm going to try and bench press 500 pounds. Will everybody come out and support me? Yeah. Next week comes. They've got the bench with the 500 pounds, and they have it sitting right by the front door. Why do they have the bench sitting right by the front door? See it, touch it. Scary can try and lift it. Can't move it. He can't do it. What are we doing? We're getting the weight what? We're putting the weight over. Making people believe in the weight. If we make people believe in the weight, we make people believe in whoever pushes the weight. What did we do to make people believe in the weight? Nothing more than simply let it sit by the front door. Did we need to do anything more than that? Oh. Tony's in the back warming up for reps with like 405. Comes out, intermission, cuts a little promo. But before he cuts the promo, all the ring crew bring the weight into the ring where the audience can see them doing it. And they all grab the weight how? They fucking sell it like it's the heaviest thing they've ever picked up, even if it's just a 45 pound plate, a 20.4 kilogram plate. Do you understand? What are they doing? Selling the gimmick. Helping to get the weight over, make people buy, believe into the weight, thus make people buy, believe into Tony, thus making people buy, believe into anybody who wrestles Tony or is on a card with Tony. How much have they done? Set the weight up, Tony comes out. Hey, everybody, need your, you know, need your support, need your prayers, need your hopes, your dreams, your testicles. I need you to be quiet. I need concentration. Takes his time, walks around the bench couple of times, checks the bar. What's he doing? And he's building heat. The longer he takes, the more the people want. Now, heat, just so you guys understand, really understand, heat is like an emotional keep away. Remember when you were a kid and your brother, your sister, your friend had something, they go, hey, you want this? And you go, yeah, and you go to reach for it and they take it away. What did you immediately feel? Like, fuck her. Right? That's what you're doing in a wrestling match. You're working the gimmick of the match to create a want, a need, and now, as the baby face, you understand what the audience wants, you try to give it to them, and the heel does what? Takes it away. Gimmicks of tag match, you guys do what? You make the audience want to see the baby face make the tag. The baby face does what? He does his half. He tries to make the tag then you two do whatever it takes to keep him from. And if we do it enough, at the right time, we give it to him, people are happy. If we do it too long, we get fuck you heat. Ah, fuck you, you're not gonna give it to me, I'm done. 
Make sense? So, walk around the ring. Gets ready to bench press. Lays down. Grabs the bar. You can feel the heat. You can feel the crowd. Building. Just like you guys. Push. Holds it. Lowers it. Stops. Waits. <laughs> Waits. Pushes it. Place explodes. He's over like a million bucks, is he not? Who in that audience don't want to be him? I'll be here next week. I'm going to have my first match. How many people do you think sold, showed up just to see him have his first match? Every person in that fucking building did. Sold the place out. <coughs> Tony wanted to have a great match. Wanted to have the best match on the card. How many of you want to have the best match on the card? Put your hands up. Damn right you do. You want to have the best match on the card? God damn right. That's what this business is all about. Having the best match on the fucking card. Fuck yeah. Best match on the goddamn card. Motherfuckers. Follow that shit. Steal that fucking show. Put it in my back pocket. I own that bitch. Tony went out and worked with a guy that was about the size of Fanaki. How many of you know Fanaki? <laughs> Fanaki is a very talented individual. He could not, if he were not, because remember, you serve two purposes in this business. One is to be the thing that sells tickets, and one is to be the thing that helps sell tickets. If Funaki was not one of those two things, would he be able to stay with WWE as long as he did? So I simply use Funaki as a physical illustration of the disparity between Tony Atlas and the person he was wrestling. Tony Atlas went back, came back after a good, solid 12 fucking minute match. Ole was standing at the back, fuming. Tony said, what'd you think, boss? And Ole said, thank you. He said, no, thank you. He said, no, thank you. He goes, what do you mean? He goes, well, thank you for killing the fucking business. What are you talking about? Killed the fucking business dead. Thank you so much. You just killed everything we fucking did with you and you killed everything on the rest of the fucking show and we're going to have to start from scratch again. Oh, God, thank you so much. Tony said, how did I kill the fucking business? Crowd was going crazy. Holy goes, let me explain it to you, dummy. And I've done the exact same thing, just so you guys know. Took the both of them, brought them in the locker room, made them stand in front of the mirror. Look at the two of you. You knew nothing about wrestling. You saw the two of you come out. How long do you think it'd take for that guy there to beat that guy there? It's not long. It took you 12 minutes. Last week, you bench pressed 500 pounds. It took you 12 minutes to beat him. Last week, you benched 500 pounds. It took you 12 minutes to beat him, plus you took him in the corner and you punched him 10 times in the head. You never marked him, he never bled, and you didn't knock him out. So it's either one of three things. You're the biggest pussy I've ever seen. He's the toughest fucking guy I've ever met. Or it's all fake. Which is it? Because on top of that, you pulled him out, pressed him over your head, and had slammed him to the fucking mat to beat him after you went 12 minutes. So how good was your match? Huh? So just killed everything that they did. Tony had to leave the territory. Had to wait for a year, two years, come back. Let that die off. Killed it dead. How much did it take to get him over? How much did it take to kill him off? Nothing, 12 minutes. Killed him dead. You guys have to know what the business of your match is and then how to work accordingly. It's not always about having a good match. 